Hello, I'm Susan Caddo. Thank you for being with us. For the last 17 years, one southeastern Oklahoma community has lived under a cloud of fly ash, the leftovers from burning coal used to produce electricity. Hundreds of thousands of tons of coal fly ash have been dumped in unlined pits around Bokoshi. Even though many people in the area have died from various cancers, the state health department says there's nothing unusual going on. For years, residents of Bokoshi, Oklahoma lived under a cloud of fly ash from the making money, having fun fly ash pit south of town. Scores of open bed trucks sped each day down Highway 31, moving fly ash from the AES Shady Point power plant to dump their load in the pit a mile from town. Today, the trucks are sealed, sprayed with water when they leave the power plant, dump into a system that uses water to hold down the dust, and the trucks are washed again before they leave. Sarah Penn is Deputy General Counsel of the Department of Environmental Quality. She was the attorney involved in DEQ's dealings with the Bokoshi Fly Ash Pit, a site the agency repeatedly inspected, eight years after it began operations. I think that's a direct result of the uh, work of DEQ and the complaints of the citizens. I mean, in communities like that, it's really important for the people to call in and tell us what's going on so we can know because we don't have enough people to go and see these sites every day. Today, the coal ash is largely unseen, except when the wind blows. Dub Talbert's property runs right up to the ash pit. When the wind out of the north, northwest, uh, is when it's the worst. Now it'll blow out the south, and when it blows out of the south, you know, uh, it'll, it'll Koshi gets it then. Carlin Tapp is a photographer whose work pushed him into becoming an activist. I spent seven years there working and talking to people and meeting families and seeing people pass away with cancer. Unbelievable numbers, you know, it's off the charts as the saying goes. But what you see is you see all of these very unusual types of cancer. Bakoshi resident Tim Tanksley witnessed the death count increase year after year. Wayne Croft, his wife, Bob Perman's wife, Jesse Swannell, Bobby Shores, Bonnie Shores. Uh, I mean, bunches of people died of lung cancer in the last since this pit went into operation. But no one ever added up the death toll or the various types of cancer. National Geographic and others asked the Oklahoma Central Cancer Registry at the State Health Department to conduct a study to determine if there is a cancer cluster in Bokoshi. A few days ago, that report was made public, and it concluded the rates are not statistically higher than the state of Oklahoma, and it has not changed over time. Well, that is a bunch of... After finishing the report, Dub Talbert expanded on his thoughts. It's a waste of paper there. I mean, I, I know better now, and I know there has to be, you know, more, a higher cancer rate right here in this area. I know there has to be. I mean, I've seen too many of my neighbors die here in the last eight, ten years. The study focused on just two cancer-causing elements in fly ash, arsenic and chromium-6. The idea that there's only two substances within fly ash that have been identified by multiple agencies as carcinogenic to human. Numerous publications list far more than just two cancer-causing elements in Bokoshi fly ash. The list includes heavy metals and other toxic chemicals. Rafaela Espinoza is the cancer epidemiologist at the State Health Department. Whenever we do these uh, community assessments, is through the Agency of Toxic Substance and Disease Registry, which is a registry held by the CDC. And there are only two cancer-causing substances in that registry for fly ash. That it is category A, it is carcinogenic to humans, and so we pulled out the arsenic and chromium-6 and the sites that were associated with that. Now, Clean Hydro, the company's name for the Bokoshi pit today, says it wants to extract lime to sell for agricultural uses, a plan that is being met with protest. They're just going to stir that stuff up some more. And what you was reading there a while ago, it said it should, you know, less you can handle it, the better off you be, are, is basically what they were saying. And so they're going to stir it up some more, and they're going to have to have some more water. 
When the coal is consumed in the power plant's boilers, the toxic and cancer-causing chemicals do not burn up. They are left behind in concentrated form in the fly ash. For years at the Pakoshi pit, Clean Hydro also dumped millions of gallons of drilling wastewater onto the ash. Video shot by a Bakoshi resident documented what happened. The toxic water ran out of the pit and onto Dub Talbert's land and into his cattle pond. The practice was ended when DEQ and the Corporation Commission, which allowed the dumping, realized what was happening. All of the drilling waste, plus millions of gallons of fresh water dumped onto the ash pile, raises yet another issue that has not been examined. What is all of this toxic water doing to groundwater? Sarah Penn with the Department of Environmental Quality. There's always a risk, and it's important to verify that. But Taubert's water well was tested, and it showed high levels of chlorides directly associated with the nearby fly ash pit. Penn urges people who are concerned about their groundwater or other pollution to contact her agency. Anytime we get a complaint in Bacosha, we go out and look, but if there's something else that we need to go look, then we'll, we will look. If it's not within our jurisdiction, I'm going to tell you, we can't go do anything. That doesn't mean we won't try to refer it to somebody who does have jurisdiction. Just this week in Memphis, Tennessee, a power plant where thousands of tons of coal ash is impounded, groundwater tests found over 300 times the federal drinking water standard for arsenic, along with high levels of lead, and other toxins. We attempted to talk with operators of the AES Shady Point power plant. They never responded to our requests. We also attempted to talk with the owners of Clean Hydro, better known as making money and having fun. They declined to talk with us also. We attempted to get records on the permits granted the Bakoshi ash pit by the Oklahoma Department of Mines. They have yet to respond to our requests.